What if I told you Kuwait built a whole beachfront city in the middle of the desert? Not by going into the sea like Dubai, but by pulling the sea into the desert. Yes, they literally made the ocean come inland. And once you see how they did it, you'll understand why the whole world is watching this place. Kuwait is wealthy. Kuwait is modern. But Kuwait has one major limitation. It simply doesn't have much coastline left to build on. And the more you understand Kuwait's geography, the more you realize why this limitation matters. Because over 70% of the country is desert, not the soft, golden sand you imagine from travel brochures, but harsh salt flats, shifting dunes, and cracked earth. Try building a luxury home here, and it would sink, crack, or collapse before you even finished it. So Kuwait had two choices. Fight the sea by building outward like Dubai, or invite the sea inward into the desert. And that second idea, even though it sounded like science fiction, started becoming more serious after one surprising discovery. Engineers looked at old satellite maps and found some natural lines in the desert. These weren't roads or rivers. They were shallow paths where seawater used to flow many years ago. This gave them an idea. If water once came here on its own, maybe they could guide it again. But the project didn't start right away. It was paused for many years due to major national issues. The idea was put aside. When Kuwait revisited the idea years later, engineers were terrified of one thing. What if the water turned stagnant? Imagine investing billions only to create mosquito-filled, smelly, dead water that no one could live near. So Kuwait didn't build a city first. It built a test. In 2004, they dug a small section of canals, reshaped them, added tidal gates, built a protective breakwater, and then they walked away. They waited and waited, and waited. The first few days looked promising. A month later, the water was still clear. A year later, fish appeared. Three years later, plants began growing where nothing had ever grown. In that moment, Kuwait realized something powerful. The desert wasn't fighting the sea. The desert was accepting it. And that meant the full project could begin. Construction began with a goal so large, it almost feels like a joke move more sand than the entire Suez Canal's first construction. But that's exactly what happened. 44 million cubic meters in the early phases, 138 million cubic meters planned in total, enough earth to reshape the map. But here's where it gets even more unbelievable. The desert ground was too soft to build anything on, so engineers brought giant cranes, hooked up 15-ton steel weights, lifted them 12 meters into the air, and dropped them again and again pounding the earth so hard. The ground literally changed structure. The sound echoed across the desert like thunder. And when the dust settled, what remained was land strong enough to support homes, roads, and entire neighborhoods. But all of that would mean nothing if the water couldn't move. That's where the 10-ton tidal gates came in, massive flaps that swing automatically, and push 27 million liters of water every minute through the canals. No pumps, no electricity, just pure physics. This one detail, water movement, would decide whether the city lived or died. Before construction, only 142 recorded species. A bare, empty ecosystem. But once the water started moving, nature responded like it had been waiting for years. Today, more than 1,000 species live here. Fish hide in the lagoons. Crabs crawl along the edges. Birds migrate through. Corals attach to canal walls. Even dolphins and turtles occasionally wander in. The water is so clean that the entire lagoon network acts as a protected nursery. Because fishing is banned. A place that was once abandoned desert is now one of Kuwait's richest marine habitats. And that brings us to the people. Because sooner or later, water attracts life above the surface, too. Today, Sea City looks like something out of a dream. Wide blue lagoons winding through residential districts palm-lined walkways, private jetties behind every home, and a luxury marina so big that 900 boats can dock at once. Homes here cost between $700,000 and $1.6 million. Many are second homes for Kuwaitis, who come here to escape the crowded northern cities. Sea City isn't a tourist trap. It's not trying to be Dubai. It's something else. A quiet water-based lifestyle for families who want peace, but also want the ocean at their doorstep. And while thousands already live or vacation here, the question now becomes, 
If this city grows to 250,000 people, can it handle the pressure? Every mega project has a moment where excitement meets reality. And for Sea City, that moment is now. Because even though the canals are healthy today, experts worry about the future. What if rising sea levels overwhelm the system? What if desert silt starts filling the canals faster than expected? What if the tidal gates need constant expensive maintenance? And will people truly move here long term or will it remain a beautiful but seasonal getaway? These questions don't cancel the project, but they do add a sense of uncertainty. And uncertainty is what makes this project so fascinating. Because we're not just watching a city being built. We're watching an experiment in how humans and nature can coexist in one of the toughest environments on Earth.